So, Alex, first of all, what are we expecting to hear from Peter Zatko on Capitol Hill tomorrow? Yeah, so I think that, that the hearing tomorrow will probably follow um, two lanes of conversation. Uh, there'll be questions around uh, the data privacy concerns, um, around the, the bots and fake accounts that Zatco has alleged that the company either ignored or didn't disclose. But I also expect uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee to focus on some more of the data privacy issues that legislators care about um, that might be a little less relevant to the acquisition, but increasingly relevant as D.C. has been able to push through any antitrust legislation, but has not gotten a lot of traction on data privacy. So they might take this opportunity to lean into some of those themes as well. Now, Jeff, Elon Musk is trying to use new information that Twitter signed a $7 million separation agreement with uh, Peter Zatko back in June. Musk trying to use that as a reason to cancel the deal. You know, what exactly is he trying to say here? Well, he's basically saying that that payment constituted something outside the ordinary course of business. When you have these buyout agreements going on, one of the provisions that's often in there says that the seller has to continue to run the business in the ordinary course. Mr. Musk's contention is this $7 million severance payment was somehow tied to silencing Mr. Zatko so that he would not bring forth his uh, his complaints publicly. So that, that, he claims, is another reason that there's been a material adverse event and he should be able to cancel the deal. It does sound like a lot of money, $7 million uh, to get this guy to go away, Alex, and then he ends up, you know, blowing the whistle anyway. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened here between Zatko and Twitter? Yeah, Emily, the sticker shock that you're having might be some of the reason why Musk feels like he can lean into this as an argument that um, this type of settlement should have been brought to his camp and is outside the regular course of business. So uh, this was a guy who was a, a, an executive on the security side, was brought in um, a number of years back and oversaw a lot of the um, important kind of security pieces and the teams that worked on those things internally at Twitter. So um, he is a person who, you know, claims that he has kind of insider knowledge on this. The company says, well, look, uh, you could have actually made some changes on these things. So there's an interesting um, kind of back and forth here. Emily, I will point out, um, it has been reported that in that settlement agreement, he was still allowed to blow the whistle um, to, to, govern, to the government if there were any issues. So um, $7 million, definitely sticker shock. Um, definitely uh, that kind of third strike that Elon is claiming uh, allows him to get out of the deal. Um, but uh, did leave that door open for us to hear from uh, Peter Zatko tomorrow morning. Okay. Now, Jeff, has a judge weighed in on this latest request from Musk and this latest information about uh, the separation agreement? And if not, when are we going to hear from her? Well, the judge has allowed Mr. Musk to amend his counterclaims in the case to add the whistleblower's allegations. I want to point out that the $7 million payment may be contractual. We do not know if this was per a severance agreement with Mr. Zatko. So I wouldn't automatically recoil at the $7 million number. Uh, we still need to find out what that's all about. Uh, I doubt we're going to learn that tomorrow either. So how are you expecting this testimony from Zatko tomorrow to be folded into the case that, of course, is building up to this trial coming up in mid-October, Jeff? His, his testimony tomorrow about the national security stuff and potential spies within Twitter's employee uh, uh, group are the things that the senators are going to be focusing on. The folks that, that we're concerned about is going to be his, his allegation that he raised the question about how many spam and robot accounts were embedded within the customer base and the Twitter, his colleagues' lack of interest in finding that out. That's the key question in the trial coming up because that's where Mr. Musk has put all his chips in terms of defense arguments. Well, clearly, uh, both parties are going to be watching this, this testimony with bated breath. Uh, Alex, any word from Twitter about the latest salvo or how any of this potentially changes their plans? 
So uh, they basically came out and said, look, we don't buy the argument that the separation agreement um, is a viable excuse. Um, I know that the Twitter camp will also be watching this very closely, as will a lot of the shareholders um, who are potentially making their voices heard in the shareholder vote tomorrow. Um, I would think if things go really far down the line of privacy concerns, if um, there's a lot of kind of interest in the data security piece that are unrelated to the acquisition, uh, that would just be another thing to add to the list of Twitter CEOs kind of um, big ticket items to care about. Twitter has not been brought in to DC as often as a lot of the larger social media peers. Um, so I think uh, internally you could argue there's a lot of distractions going on at the company right now. And if they do get some traction um, in terms of legislators' arguments that data privacy should be more important, then uh, Emily, I would add that to the list of uh, kind of some of these ancillary concerns that are outside of just operating the business.